It's like three corner jacks. Just pulling onto some dirt, um, heading east from Colgra. We pulled up there last night. If you need to stop uh, at this side of the territory, just over the SA border, good place to pull up. Great feed there. Just airing down 25, 30, 30. Heading to the Lamberts Centre, which is geographical centre of Australia. Then going out to Fink, then heading north for about 70 or 80 k's, then uh, back west into Chambers Pillar. Camping up there for two nights and um, I'll have a chat more about that later and where we're going after that, eh? The Great Australian Railway, Adelaide to Darwin. It's the track that the gun goes on. Not quite two hours it's taken us from um, Coldgrove to get to the turn off to Lambert Centre. As you can see, it's um, 12 k's from here. Thinks straight ahead. Stretch the legs. A little bit of road work um, happening, just a little bit further west from here. Not too much. Road, um, pretty corrugated. Quite a few washouts. Sort of been averaging, I don't know, 65, 66 kilometers an hour. So just taking our time casually. Well, that 12 k's took about 28 minutes, 29 minutes. Center, dead center of Australia. A couple of guys camped over there, flat battery. The little uh, battery um, starter didn't work on their battery, so just gonna take the cruiser over and um, they can jump from the auxiliary battery, I think. Let's see how they go. Well, the little battery charger, oh, battery starter, didn't work on his uh, Land Rover. I think he's got some, some computer problem. He said he's had problems with his electric brakes. Just checked uh, continuity of his jumper leads, they're okay. Check battery voltage. Once it's hooked up, and we're getting about 13.2 volts across. Um, the next thing I was going to do is uh, jump directly to his uh, starter motor and just do a bit of a bush mechanic and um, jump start there. It's an automatic, so we can't pull start him. Uh, the starter motor's in a pretty awkward and inaccessible place, apparently, and he's had it replaced about three months ago. But yeah, it does sound like a might be a computer problem. He says his dash is showing low voltage, and as I mentioned, he's had problems with his electric brakes. So we're going to let the, his battery charge up for a little while. And if that doesn't work, then we'll um, take Steve, the bloke on the left, into Fink. we we'll try and sort something out there. And now here we are, dead centre of Australia. Oh, well, he's got it started. Just a little bit of charge into the battery. Actually around two sets of jumper leads, one from auxiliary across to his, his um, starter, and one from my main across to his starter. Not that that should have made any difference, but anyhow, he's still started up. Welcome to Fink. Uh, store's not open. The arch door's not open. Oh, there's a couple of people. I was just about to say, the place looks pretty deserted, but I just saw a couple of old mates um, sitting by a fire. We're going straight ahead. That's a big building over there. Must be their... Um... In 300 metres, continue straight. It's their um, recreation area, I suppose. Footy field out here. Our road. Sacred so side out to our left. Um, this was still just outside um, Fink, but uh, we're going on to the Garn Heritage Trail now. So we've come off the Fink Road. This is the main road uh, north through or past Chambers Pillars, Maryvale, and up to Alice Springs. Alice Springs is about 260 k's. We're in the bed of the Fink River. Um, in some places, it's um, just recently it's been flooded. Not so here at the moment. Plenty of these signs around. All uh, along the roadway. Just recently passed through Maryvale. It's a close community at 
the moment you need a permit to get in there. Uh, Chambers Pool is less than 40 k's from Maryvale. up a little rise and uh, asked the boss if she wanted to take a photo of the scenery. Well, it's just um, finishes here, put it down there. A little bit rocky but anyhow we got up here and you won't see it but I'll zoom in on editing. Chambers Pillar. It's about another 12 k's from here. It's been a slow trip. This is going to be our first gear descent. You see the road just down there. We are in four wheel drive too, by the way. Well, we just made it into the reserve. Uh, still got about three and a half k's to go. Uh, it's an oxymoron, no off road driving, but it's a four wheel drive track, eh? Google Maps reckons we've arrived, but um, we quite haven't yet. And some of the times with the directions are. Uh, I don't know where it was going. It wasn't going where there were tracks. Yeah, that's corrugations you can hear. That's the pillar just out to the right, I think. When the boss checked the bookings this morning, uh, there wasn't any bills booked in here. So, anyhow, we've got some company tonight. We're at the pillar campground, Chambers Pillar. Chambers Pillar up there. There's uh, four campsites here, I think, or five. Something like that. There's also a bush camp which is a bit further around the other side. There's toilets here. Just up here. Just up here. There you go. Took us just five minutes shy of four hours to travel from the northern side, I think. Um, where the boss took over driving to get to here. I drove the last hour. I think that's um, around about 200 k's. Pretty slow going. Some of it very slow. We'll probably have to revisit our travel plans. Well, we're going from here back out to Merriweather again, then back south down towards Fink, then heading towards um, Dalhousie Springs. I just don't think we'll make that in a day. And the other thing is um, we don't have enough fuel on board now. We certainly used a lot more fuel than I anticipated. I've filled up the two jerrys on the back of the land cruiser and the two jerrys on the back of the camper, but the two front ones are empty. And we're seeing about a quarter of a tank, or well, full when we left this morning, so three quarters of a tank have gone through. Uh, the two, the four jerrys that I've got on board that are full, that won't fill up the tank. And I just don't think, well it might get us to mount there, but I just don't think we're going to make our housing in a day. Our neighbours are left. Just thought I'd come up and read the signs, uh, this is a, an historical society. This is an historical reserve. So I'll find out a bit more about it. This place isn't a um, sand pit either. I'll tell you more about that shortly. Okay, snapshot. Um, we'll talk about European history. John McDougall Stewart first visited here in 1860 and named it Chambers Pillar after James Chambers, one of his South Australian sponsors. <clears throat> that was back, yeah, as I say, back in 1860. There's been a whole bunch of people who have visited this area and uh, etched their name in the bottom of the pillar, apparently. There's two walks here, one around, they call that Castle Rock. It's um, 1.8 k's. Uh, grade 2 easy, and they say allow 40 minutes, and there's one around uh, the pillar as well. Go over and go around it, and it's only um, 1.5 k's and 40 minutes, and it's easy, grade 2 as well, so it's not too bad. Well, this is actually uh, an Aboriginal historical site as well. 
I suppose like most places, Central Australia, there's going to be some connection with the Indigenous people. Just read some information about um, these people who graffitied the Chambers Pillar. Uh, some good history there from 1870 to 1888. And I say, the sign says that uh, it was a, a way of people back in the early days of um, signposting records of where they've been and other travellers could see that as well. Now I was talking about the snow sand pit out here. If you're coming out as a family with some kids around, make sure um, you and the kids are wearing shoes all the time. The country looks beautiful uh, until I'll just show you. It's like three corner jacks. These nasty things. You'll find them in your tyres as well. Uh, the boss is wearing pretty uh, thin soled flip flops and she had two go right through. Yeah, that, eh? yeah, so just be aware, yeah, this is definitely a shoe wearing area. Well, I reckon we got a GoPro just on the go. It's about cool battery, it was a um, brand new battery too, isn't it? Well, freshly recharged. Anyhow, enough whining. At the base of uh, Castle Rock. We are on the opposite side from the campground now. That's why the sun's in our face. The tram's pulled right over there. Looks like a track here. We might follow this track. We trailblazed. Pretty nice view up here, though. Castle Rock now. A little tip for you, if you come out here and you want to do the Castle Rock walk, looks like this walk starts from about the information booth up here. Don't walk down the road like we did then um, cut bush. Well, that's where we've come out. Pillar. It's at the back of a campsite. That's the road in. So these are the first campsites here, so it's just um, before you get to the campsites on the left. There's day use parking up near where we're camped as well. No rubbish bins provided out here, so whatever you bring in, take out with you. There's actually seven camp spots here. Number one and two just there, so good views of uh, Castle Rock and the Pillar from there. There's actually two toilets, the one I showed you before, and there's another one down there behind the bush. No, it's not the bush. There's a tin shed down there with a drop toilet. It's about two hours later from when we came back from doing the castle rock walk. Off to do the pillar walk now. It's another easy walk. I think it's about one and a half K, so it says 40 minutes. But, um, yeah, we'll see how long it takes us. Boss tells me there's some steps and some sort of scaffolding or viewing areas up around the base of the pillar. You can just see them at the base on the right hand side. Notice that also from when we were out doing the castle rock walk as well. Been a while since I've done a useless fact update, so here's a useless fact. When we were over in Western Australia last year, we did a um, guided tour at Mornington Wilderness Sanctuary, and the guide was telling us some interesting facts about spinifex and other stuff as well. And apart from having seeds for granivorous animals, which you wouldn't say um, seed eating animals, they had to be granivorous. Um, so we're saying that Spinifex doesn't seed, like we see around us, until it's two years old. 
you know, I'm not certain uh, whether that applies to the spinifex over here in the Northern Territory. But that's a useless fact for you for today. Well, those early explorers must have been pretty clean to climb up this to get up to there to graffiti the rock. I suppose that's what they did in the day, blazing. No, we're not up there yet. It's just the um, sandstone rocks down the bottom here. This stuff dates um, 54, 56. There's one there, 93. And so the journey begins. Steps here, actually. Pretty flash. Check out the scenery. This is the same bit that I videoed the other day. Lots of little dog footprints and there's a couple of cow footprints here too. I've been following the dog footprints just about all the way from Chambers Pillar. bar that hit the rocks some a lot lower than what we had on the ultimate. Welcome to Maryvale, it's an Aboriginal community about 45 kilometres um, I guess this right east of Chambers Pillars it's the um, access point into Chambers Pillar it's um, taken us an hour 40 to do 44 kilometres Average speed about 27 kilometres an hour. Some of the road is four wheel drive and four wheel drive low, and you do need to air down. Heading um, back west again, uh, just crossing the Hugh River. That's the um, the bridge structure there, is the railway line up to Alice, probably about, I don't know, 60 k's south of Alice at the moment. Heading towards Stewart's Well, about 50 k's by road north east of Stuart Wells is um, Rainbow Valley, it's a conservation park. Two campgrounds here, one just up to my left. The toilet's here as well, and there's one a little bit beforehand, a bit more like a bush for the camp. 
no facilities down there but it's not too far away from here either the road in from Stuart Highway it's a little bit dusty a little bit corrugated but you can come in with a conventional vehicle if you take your time I suppose two walks here one's called a clampan walk 1.6 k's one hour grade two other ones mushroom rock loop uh, 1k 45 minutes grade two easy clampan just out here let's go have a look it's all about the coloured rocks some striking colours to um, what well, they call mushroom rock just in front of us. Little birds you might hear in the background are, uh, I think they're fairy martins. They build little mud nests up here. Let's bring it closer. Yeah, I'm not kidding you, I think they are fairy martins. So it's not a joke. Google it, fairy martins, M-A-R-T-I-N-S. Just walked up a side track, it's a uh, viewing platform, sunset viewing platform perhaps, I don't know. Campground. You can just see mushroom rock down there. Back in at Colgra. Yeah, I'm a bit raspy at the moment, I've got a cold. Yeah, I've done two COVID tests, so I'm not COVID yet. Yet. And you know, um, we've travelled about, I don't know, 300 odd kilometres, maybe a little bit more. I think it's looking okay. It's the diff oil leak in here. They'll keep an eye on it. <clears throat> I think. And perhaps when we get back into civilization again, I might actually pull the diff center out and replace the um, gasket there. We're about 20 k's uh, north of Cooper Pedy. So that brings to the end uh, this particular episode, roads to Cooper Pedy.